Thank you uh, for coming to this briefing. Now, the Global Report on Human Settlements is one of two flagship reports published by UN Habitat. Its objective is to inform governments and partners of global human settlements conditions and trends. It is published every two years uh, under a UN General Assembly mandate. Now, the main objective of uh, this particular volume that uh, we are presenting is to assess the effectiveness of current urban planning systems all over the world. The report also identifies innovative approaches and on the basis of this suggests how urban planning could be reformed so as to contribute more effectively to the environmental economic and social goals of sustainable urbanization. The 2009 Global Report starts by reviewing the factors shaping 21st century cities that future urban planning must address. These include demographic, environmental, and economic challenges. Rapid urbanization, poverty, and informality will be particularly important in developing countries. Climate change, the excessive dependence of cities on fossil fuel-driven vehicles, shrinking cities, aging, and the multicultural composition of cities will be relatively more important in developed economies. Urban planners and managers have also increasingly found themselves confronted by socio-spatial challenges in the form of socio-economic and spatial fragmentation and polarization in cities. Also, urban sprawl poses significant planning and governance challenges in both the North and the South. With respect to governance and institutional challenges, the report asks how urban planning should respond to the change from government to governance, as well as to decentralization and democratization, and the desire for increased participation by different urban actors and citizens. This slide captures the main challenges that future planning will have to address in the South, that is, poverty, informality, and slums. In the north, the main challenges will be environmental, especially climate change and urban sprawl. An important conclusion of the report is that urban planning can be reformed to effectively respond to the, to the challenges that I have just highlighted. The report identifies numerous innovative approaches adopted uh, in many countries in recent decades. Some of these include strategic spatial planning, new land regularization and management approaches, especially in developing countries, participatory processes and partnerships at the neighborhood level, and planning for new and more sustainable spatial forms such as compact cities and new urbanism. In spite of these innovations, older forms of master planning have persisted in many countries. Here, the most obvious problem with this approach is that it has failed to accommodate the ways of life of the majority of, of, of inhabitants in, in rapidly growing and largely poor and informal cities and has often directly contributed to social and spatial marginalization. In suggesting a new role for urban planning, the 2009 Global Report identifies a number of broad policy directions that must be pursued. Firstly, 
governments should increasingly take on a more central role in cities. Secondly, reformed urban planning systems must fully and unequivocally address the current and emerging urban challenges. Thirdly, countries should formulate national urban policies in order to address urban challenges and prospects more systematically. Fourthly, capacity to enforce urban planning regulations in many developing countries should be given very high priority. The report also identifies more specific policy directions, starting with the redesigning of institutional and the regulatory frameworks for urban planning. It recommends that livelihoods opportunities, robust anti-corruption measures, especially at the local level, special coordination of sectoral development and investment, and equality of all citizens under, under the law should be at the core of new institutional and the regulatory frameworks. In the area of participation, planning and politics, the report encourages governments to implement a number of minimum but critical measures, which include establishment of supportive political and legal systems, as well as public resources to support and implement decisions of participatory processes. The report suggests that in order to integrate the green and brown ag agendas in cities, urban local authorities should implement a comprehensive set of green policies and strategies encompassing land use densification, renewable energy, green infrastructure, public transport, waste management, and slum upgrading. The report also recommends the comprehensive integration of green technologies and standards into planning and building regulations. In the area of urban planning and informality, the report suggests that governments should recognize the positive role played by the urban informal sector, including through legislative reform. Governments should also pursue alternatives to force the eviction and make use of innovative strategies such as guided land development, land readjustment, and sharing of urban space with informal actors. With respect to planning special structure of cities and provision of infrastructure, the report suggests that strategic special plans based mainly on accessibility and public transport considerations should be used to promote more compact forms of urban expansion. Urban local authorities should formulate infrastructure plans as key elements of strategic spatial plans and establish regional governance structures to manage urban growth that spreads across administrative boundaries. And this is a process that is occurring uh, all over the world, both in the north and in the south. Monitoring and evaluation of urban plans is an area that has generally been neglected by many urban planning systems. This report, therefore, suggests that urban planning systems should integrate monitoring and evaluation as permanent features and include clear indicators that are aligned with plan goals, objectives, and policies. All evaluations should involve extensive consultation with all plant stakeholders and should focus on site, subdivision, and neighborhood plans. Finally, the report suggests a number of changes in urban planning education, including updating of curricula, 
by adding new areas such as communication, negotiation, climate change, and gender. Planning schools should also adopt what we have called the one world approach in order to equip students to work in different world contexts. In other words, as the core of the curriculum, uh, there should be common skills and knowledge applicable in all parts of the world. And this would uh, uh, enhance um, the mobility of planning graduates. Now, as Sharade said, uh, when we launched this uh, uh, report in Washington, D.C., uh, I, I personally was struck by the convergence of ideas and thinking about what urban planning should be doing, both in the north and the south. So I have a feeling that as we move towards the World Urban Forum in Rio next year, uh, I think uh, we are making a, a good, very good progress in terms of, uh, of, of urban planning. And this report, I think, has been taken, as Sharad has said again, has been taken on board by professional associations both in the north and in the south, and we are all propagating the same ideas. And the purpose of the report is really to provide the evidence base for the recommendations uh, that all of us are making. So thank you very much for listening.